Dude, you got me. I have no idea. It's, it's beyond me, bro. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm glad y'all showed up. At least some of y'all, anyways. Me and Wilson are sitting here. We're discussing how it is that a lot of the uh, videos I see, on, like tech videos and stuff, I'll look in the comment sections and even mine, I'll look in my comment section and I'll see more critiques about the, the person in front of the camera or their studio or anything going on except the product they're showing. It's interesting. <laughs> Why do the videos end up being more about who's in front of the camera than the actual product being shown? I have no idea because the main reason you probably clicked on the video in the first place because they had a big old blown up shot of the product and the product's name, not the person or their studio or, you know what, Wilson, let's just say that for a podcast or something. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody, welcome back, man. For you new guys and girls who just showed up, this is New Stuff TV. I'm your host, Antoine. Raise up off my nutsack. Let me do me and you do you, Richardson. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh my God. Hey, we are going to talk about some hot new headphones, man. It's the JBL Tour 1s. These are like my some of my new faves, man. Everyone who's familiar with the channel knows I absolutely love and use pretty much daily my Sony uh, XM3s. However, the XM4s are the new hot ticket as far as Sony is concerned. But now we have this newcomer. So let's just kind of compare the two together and see how they kind of, you know, stand up against each other. As you can see here, they both lay flat and they articulate in all the different ways you might need them to. Both of them, if you have the left ear cup on your left ear like it should be, and then you take them down, you flip them down towards your body uh, if you just want to wear them around your neck. Both of them actually operate that way and they, they do not swivel, uh, swivel the opposite direction. So they both lay flat like that. I, I think some people actually like it when they flip up so they can still hear their music, but that brings me to a feature that both of them have, which is the uh, wearing detection. So once you take them off of your ears, they're both gonna stop playing the music. Right there, you can see Sony sensor. Uh, it only has a sensor Sensor that you can see on one side, but on the JBL headphones, you don't see it at all. They've managed to hide whatever sensor they're using inside of these ear cups with the, uh, the cushion here. Without pulling out a triple beam or a food scale, I can tell you that both of these weigh about the same. You probably won't be able to tell the difference by holding them both in each hand. Both of these have a button on the left ear cup. These buttons are gonna function one of two ways. Either A, you program it to control your ambient sound, your, your talk through or your A and C, uh, or you're going to be able to program it to be your uh, virtual assistant, i.e. Google, Siri, Alexa, and all that good stuff. You can't uh, have both on the same button. On the right ear cup, that's where you're gonna see a huge difference. On Sony's headphones, there are physically no buttons, but you do get a gigantic swiping pad. This is where you're gonna control your play and pause with a tap or a double tap, and then you're going to get your swipe gestures for your up and down volume and your forward and back tracks. And if you place your palm over it for a second or so, you're gonna get your quick attention mode. But as soon as you take your hand off of the headphones, uh, ANC is gonna kick back on and your music is gonna keep playing and everything works like normal. As soon as you take your hand off, once again, it stops working. Now, when you go over to the, um, to the JBL side, you're gonna see a physical sliding switch right there. And if you slide that switch even further while the headphones are on, you're gonna get your, your pairing mode. That way you can connect these uh, using the dual connect, which Sony has as well. It's just that it's easier accessed right here. JBL decided to take advantage of buttons and the swiping pad on the ear cup to control your volumes and tracks. So right here, you have your plus and minus for volume control. And on the swiping pad here, you're gonna get a single tap for play and pause and a uh, triple taps and double taps for your forward and back track. Now, this is where I, I kind of ding JBL a little bit because you will get a ton of accidental uh, button presses or play and pauses uh, from the single tapping motion or gesture on this ear cup right here. I think that needs to be fixed with an update. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it at all, which I've said in my previous video. In regards to conversations and quick attention, what JBL has done is take it just a step further. If you press and hold, it's it's not necessarily a palm gesture, it's a, more of a touch and hold on the, on the ear pad right there. If you touch and hold it, you will be able to engage your talk through. That's what their feature is called. This will remain on until you turn it off. And this feature is gonna mute your music. It'll 
it'll still be playing. You'll hear it at a very low tone, but it'll mute your music and bring in some ambient sound. That way you can have a casual conversation without taking your, uh, your headphones off. Now let's take a quick look at both of their apps. Before we get there, I gotta turn them on. While I am a huge fan of JBL's physical switch, I'm also a huge fan of the NFC on Sony's headphones. So NFC, for some people, they think it's a gimmick, they don't use it. But for me, every time I turn them on, I use that feature because it keeps me from pressing the button. I don't wanna wear the button now. But let's get into this app, man. Let's see if I can, oh, where's my, nope, 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 that's not it. Okay, where is, there it is. Okay, there is my Sony app. So we're using the, oh man, what is this mess? It feels like every time I turn these sticking headphones on, they're pushing an update. Just just fix the doggone headphones and, and leave it be. I don't wanna update every time I go into the app. That has gotten annoying. I, for every company, okay, this is this goes out to every company. We appreciate updates, but every time we turn on your product, we don't want to have to do an update, okay? You, you gotta kinda, it's like sending emails. You make sure your email is straight and then you send it off. You don't send seven emails after that saying, oh, by the way, okay? Now, <laughs> for Sony, Sony have a, has a very robust app, man. I actually really do like it. They have three uh, tabs here. You got status, sound, and system. So in status, you got a whole bunch of active noise cancellation controls. You got this adaptive sound control where it kind of just follows you through life and adjusts on the fly. And you can actually see and hear it happening if you choose to. And these are the functions for it, or those, those are the settings for it. And then you can see where what it's actually connected to. I was listening to that juvenile 400 degrees. What y'all know about that, man? Now let's go into sound. We have some more ambient control features here. We have, uh, you can toggle up and down how much ambient sound you want put in there. You can focus on the voice if you want to. Then we have speak to chat, which is a fantastic feature if you don't like to sing along with your music. If you're a singer, you might want to turn this off. This is a good feature, but it, I'm glad you can toggle it off. Because what this feature is for is when those rude MFs come up to you while you got your headphones on and they just disrespectfully talk to you while you're in your zone, you can just start speaking and the Sony headphones will turn the music off or pause the music rather, and then you can have your conversation. It, it kicks in the ambient sound and everything else. Uh, you can actually turn this off if you want to, because like I said, as soon as words come out of your mouth, everything pauses, and if you start singing, your music's cut. Now we got the personalizer right here for noise cancellation. It'll take some pressure off if you're feeling too much pressure. That's always nice to have. You got your EQ right here with a ton of well, I ain't gonna say a ton. You got a few, a handful of, of presets here, but these presets are all also customizable. And then of course you have your custom one and custom two there and you can just turn it off. Now, 3D reality setup. This is something for the people who like high, well, is it high res audio? I think it is high res audio. Uh, with the Deezer and the uh, the title, you can get the 360 setup. I don't use either one of those. I'm a YouTube music guy and this is irrelevant to me. So I can't even tell you much about that. You gotta figure that one out for yourself. Sound quality mode. Do you want priority on sound quality or priority on a stable connection? So if you're on a subway and everybody else is listening to their Bluetooth headphones, you might want to put it on stable connection, man, because you never know what might go down in there. But if you're the person that needs that extra quality, go ahead and put it on that. Then you got your codec right there, DSAE Extreme, and it's on auto right now. Let's go in the system, see whatever other kind of goodies they got. Connect two devices at the same time. This is an option that you can toggle on or off. I'm, I don't even understand that, man. It just Why would you not want that all the time, Sony? Uh, let's see, Google Assistant button, that special button I was telling you about. What you can do is, you can go in here and you can choose Ambient Sound Control, Google Assistant, or Alexa. I'm not sure if it works with Siri. It's not here. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I can't tell you, Apple users. Let's go ahead and escape that because I don't want to change anything. Then the touch, uh, touch sensor control panel, you can kind of tone down how sensitive that panel is. That's nice. Sony has given you a lot of, of things to control within your headphones here. I like that they've taken it this far. Some people might think this is a little bit too much because some people are just really simple. They just want some headphones with basic features, but I like being able to tinker with my stuff. This is really, really nice. Just slow down on them updates, Sony. Now let's go into this JBL app. 
Compared to the Sony app, JBL's app is ultra boring, but it does what it needs to do. It takes care of business. Right here on the home page, you got your ANC, you can go into True Adaptive, and that's where the app just kind of, or the headphones actually just handle your ANC for you. So they'll block out the noises that the algorithm thinks it needs to block out. You know, you can't really have physical control over how much you're getting or not like you can in the Sonys. Or you could just do everyday mode where it just blocks out all the sound, as much sound as it can, 100% of the time. It's kind of an all or nothing kind of thing. Then you get into ambient sound control. Same deal here, man. It's an all or nothing thing. You can't control how much uh, ambient noise is being pumped in or not, or you can choose to have talk through can't have both at the same time. Well, you kind of do with talk through. Well, no, you don't. Because with ambient sound, your music will still be playing loud, as loud as you want it to be. Although you're still pumping in ambient sound. With talk through, your music is attenuated, meaning that it's at like level four or something like that. You can still hear it a little bit, but you got a lot of ambient sound. That way you can talk to people back and forth without taking those headphones on. So that's your ambient sound control. This is where we get into a little stuff that kind of competes with Sony. You got your smart audio and video. Normal, that's where you keep your sta uh, stable connection in a busy area. You're on that train, that bus, that airplane, whatever. Let's say you walk up into Best Buy. Everything's connected to Bluetooth, right? You definitely need to toggle that on. Or you can go into audio mode and it's just gonna give you the best sound quality possible. Or you can go into video mode. Let's say you're doing some gaming and you just want that low latency performance. That's where you toggle that for. So they compete with Sony in that. Then we go into the settings. Uh, you know what? Let's go back. Let's go to this EQ. Right now I got it on jazz. I'm not sure why. Oh, from my last video. That's why. My new stuff setting is this. Okay, I like this sound. I'm going to have to tweak this a little bit more, but I do like the way this sounds. Then you got studio club, bass, vocal, and jazz. So you do have a, a small handful of presets there for those of you who don't really like to play around a lot with the EQs. Or you can kind of get in here and toggle your seven band EQ, which is really nice for all you people who like to just do stuff like this. I mean, you could spend a whole day messing around with your music in a seven band EQ. But that's about it, man. Let's get out of here and we'll go into the settings. Customize controls. So you get a little bit of functionality here when it comes to customizing. You get the function button, okay? This is where we talked about with Sony, that little button on the side, you get ambient sound control, which is ANC on or off or ambient sound or your virtual assistant, which is going to be the Siri, not, well, maybe not Siri, I don't know. You're gonna get Alexa for sure and Google. And uh, then we'll go back and then we'll go into the alarm. I really like this alarm thing. So they have what's called silent now. Sometimes you don't want to listen to music. You just don't want to hear everybody else. Okay. So you just set this alarm, you know, you can play your music for up to 90 minutes. It'll play your music, then it'll turn it off and it'll keep the headphones in silent mode or, or ANC mode as long as they could until the batteries run off, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or you could do it for a set amount of time there. And it's just ANC on without having to be connected to Bluetooth because it actually disconnects from your phone, but it keeps the headphones on for this certain amount of time right here. I've actually used that feature and it's a pretty good one. You got your auto on and off, pause and play automation. You can toggle that off. Voice assistant, you get to choose which one. And that's pretty much it in regards to the app for both of them, okay? So let's just get out of here. Stop sharing my screen with you because I don't want you to see all my business. And we will talk about sound. Now, when it comes to sound, if I were talking about the Sony XM3s, I would tell you that the Sony XM3s destroy the JBLs hands down because those are my favorites. I actually prefer those over the XM4. But in this case, since I'm talking about the XM4, I'd say they're neck and neck. They are dead even. Well, maybe the the, uh, the Sonys have a little bit more bass. They're naturally a little bit more bass heavy. And I don't think that's a good thing. I think these are a little bit overly bass heavy, especially compared to the XM3s, if you've ever heard those. But as far as sound quality goes, I'm just gonna have to give them a straight up tie because they both sound fantastic. And I really enjoy listening to both of them. I just prefer the sound of the XM3s a little bit more, especially with that sound v, uh, surround VBT. Now, what else is there to talk about, man? I guess active noise cancellation, since these are, you know, these are premium active noise cancellation headphones. 
Well, I will tell you this. Sony is still the golden standard when it comes to active noise cancellation and all the implementations of it. You saw how much stuff you were able to do in that app as far as having control over that. Whereas these come in a very tight second because the active noise canceling is very, very good. It's a close second place along with all the other ones that are great coming in second because really everybody else is pretty much playing second fiddle to Sony's ANC. I really like these, man. These are staying in my collection. If I don't like a set of headphones, I have no, I have no problem sending them back. That's right, I said it. Nobody sent me either one of these. These are $350 uh, brand new when I purchased them. These were th uh, 300 brand new when I purchased them. So we're talking seven, what is that? that? That's $650 worth of headphones before tax that I have in my hands here that I spent with my own money. This is like, so this is a, a true, real person like feelings about these headphones. I think they're both worth the money that you pay for them. Uh, and I would do it all over again if I needed to. Uh, both great headphones, think they're both great buys. I just wanted you to be able to see the differences or the likeness of both of them, just because, you know, not a lot of videos out there right now about this subject. So, hey, I'm no expert in this kind of stuff, but what I do know is these are some badass headphones, both of them. These are newer. Uh, Sony probably is not coming out with an XM5 next year. They usually wait about two years before they do some craziness like that. Whoa, wait a minute. I can't believe I forgot to mention this earlier. Here are two features that absolutely take a crap all over the Sony XM4s. The first one is Google Assistant integration. Of course, you can program the either touchpad or the button to be your Google Assistant button. But all you really have to do is say, hey, G, you know, the G word, and you can ask it to do anything that Google Assistant normally does. Plus, you can ask it to do headphone functions such as changing tracks, lowering and raising the volume, even turning on and off the ANC. You can do that just by saying the hot word. That's that's clutch. Now, the last big feature that just destroys the Sony XM4s is the call quality. My previous video, I recorded the entire video using the mics from these headphones. Now, I will say that is absolutely not the best selection for shooting a whole video with. I just did it to prove a point. Uh, but if you're doing a Zoom call or a phone call through these headphones, trust me, you're gonna be the best audio on that Zoom call if, if you're in a group meeting or something. The call quality on these things is excellent. So which one are you gonna pick, man? I'm fortunate enough to have both of them because that's a hard decision to make. I don't know what you're gonna do. What's in your wallet? If you really need all those extra nice features, you gotta pull out $350 and hit that buy now button for the Sonys. If not, you can save $50 and only spend $300 on the uh, JBL right here. Either way, I'm getting out of here, man. I'm about to go find me something else to do and enjoy my weekend. And until I see y'all again, make sure y'all keep being good to each other and I'll see you when I see you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me get this straight. You sat through this whole video, the whole thing, and never once decided to hit the subscribe button or the like button. Man, it'd be the ones closest to you. I'll see how you are. Is that why you are here?